this is the way they were scheduled in Heat 1A, the Tide, the Budweiser, Circus Circus, Cooper's Express, Miss Rock, and Pete's Wicked Ale. However, we never got Heat 1A underway because as they came down the back chute, the Circus Circus with Dave Bilbock had a problem. Then he gets the boat on plane and tries to catch up to the rest of the fleet. Well, we knew he was in trouble right there because the fleet was already coming down around the final turn. He was speeding down the back stretch, trying to get up to make the start when all of a sudden the boat took off like an airplane flying through the air. You can see it hits Pickle Fork down. The boat rolls over. It lands right side up. Watch closely now because the signal to everybody about the driver is if he can open the canopy. All eyes were on the canopy. There it is. It popped open. Bill Walk is attempting to get out of the boat by himself. Jimmy looks a little bit wobbly right there. Yes, he is a little disoriented at about this point, and anybody would be. The crew, of course, back on the dock getting the radios out. They want to know the condition of the driver. You can see him standing there, but boy, the whole rear end of that boat looks like it's torn away. Well, fortunately, it did land right, right side up, so the rescue crew really didn't have too much work to do to get Bill Walk out of the boat. As you can see, he walks by himself into the rescue boat. They'll settle him down and kind of check him out, blood pressure and such, as they bring him in. His wife, Pam, listening to the radio, trying to pick up any indication as to how her husband, Dave Bill Walk, is. He appears to be in pretty good condition, a little bit shaken up, sitting up as he comes in in the rescue boat. Eric Stilau and that rescue crew from the URC that travels with us every race, doing their job perfectly, as always. And you can see parts of the boat now as they're towing it back to the pits, and we're getting ready for the restart. Let's go down to the pit area right now and find out from the owner of the boat, Ron Jones Jr., exactly what happened. Ron, did you get an idea of what happened? I was down on the start-finish line, and he the engine compressor stalled here, and he cleaned it out and got the thing relit, and he tore off down to catch everybody because the URC official said, pick up the pace, circus, pick up the pace. So he went charging down the line. I don't know if he hit somebody's swell or whatever and picked the right side up, and the thing just took off. Well, the sad thing is this is number two boat. Yeah, well, we're going home to fix that number one boat because we got to have something for Seattle. This thing's totally destroyed. It's toast. It's gone. And he should know because his family has been building unlimited hydroplanes for many, many years, from his grandfather, Ted Jones, to his father, Ron, to Ron Jones Jr. himself. And we look at that boat badly damaged. There you can see father and son kind of comforting each other, knowing there's a long week ahead as they get ready for Seattle. That boat is totally destroyed. The back end of it smashed to bits. So that's what happened as we went to start Heat 1A the very first time. They have now called for a restart. We're getting the boats back out on the water as you continue to survey the damage through the eye of the camera in the pits here in Tri-City. Well, we're very happy to welcome back to the pits Dave Billwalk. Dave, uh, as they work on your boat in the background here and get it ready to transport it back to the shop, let's talk about exactly what happened out there. Uh, we just... I, I don't know why they threw the white flag before the boats were lined up, but they threw the white flag and asked us to catch up. We tried to catch up. Uh, I've been told by Chip Hanauer that Mike Jones came over and took the lane away, and Dryden had to come over with him because he had no choice. Um, and uh, I had to boat about three-quarter throttle or so and just happened to hit a big hole, apparently, and got it up in the air, and, and it uh, just wouldn't come back. 